Afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Happy day after St. Patrick's Day for everybody who celebrated St. Patrick's Day. With too much whiskey, again. My name's Steve Bates. I'm a technical director in PM, and PMC Sierra. And we're, we've been working on two different threads within the Open Power Forum. One of them is kind of short term, and the other is longer term. And today I'm going to present a little bit of data on both of those threads. So if I had to sum up my talk in one slide, and I hope I get this right, I can probably leave the stage now. No. So this is the kind of one slide teaser for, for, for what it is that I'm going to show you over the next few slides. Process your data at three gigabytes per second with minimal CPU loading, uh, and the code is open source. So, you know, we've been talking about open source quite a bit this morning and this afternoon. Um, the, the code that I'm going to show you that all these results are based on is up on GitHub. I'll give you the URL at the end. Please, if you're interested, grab it. You can email me. I can help you get set up. We've got bit files there. We've got C code to run in the Power8. We've got RTL as source code if you want to compile it yourself. If you want to change it yourself, even better, because you know there's a lot of interesting problems to be solved. I personally am not interested in going out and solving all of them. But if I can give you guys some code to get you started uh, so you can go solve them, that'd be great. So I want to talk a little about another open standard. Um, you know, Scott was just talking about PCIe. Uh, and we have some very nice work going on around PCIe to enable things like networking. Some of these RDMA technologies, I think, are fantastic. Um, but we've also got similar things happening on the storage side. And one of the protocols that's really gaining a lot of traction right now is called NVM Express. And that's a, a, an area in which PMC plays quite a bit. So, so we ship NVM Express compliant devices. And I'll talk a little about exactly what NVM Express is in a minute. I've got to thank Nick, because he's going to save us all some time, because I can skip the what is CAPI slide. Uh, I'm going to actually show you some hardware for some experiments that we did. I'm going to actually dig into the CAPI interface a little bit, because one of the kind of longer term objectives for, for us at PMC and within the Open Power Consortium is, you know, what can we do with the CAPI interface? I think it's awesome what Mellanox have done already, having CAPI enabled uh, networking cards. We're much more of a storage based company, so one of the obvious questions is, is there reasons to put storage, either direct attached storage or storage networking kind of technologies behind the CAPI interface? What would, what would that mean compared to connecting over one of the other protocols like PCI or, or NVLink. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the performance attributes that we've seen. And we've been getting some very nice performance balancing between NVM Express and CAPI. So put your data set on the solid state drive uh, that's running NVM Express. Put your application acceleration on the CAPI card. And it actually, they balance each other very well. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to talk a little about the very simple application that we think has some implications in the data center. And the idea, again, like I said, is not to show you something that's a finished product, but to give you an open source project that we can all basically take and, and iterate in any fashion that we like. Uh, and then I'll finish with a quick summary. So NVM Express, um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a uh, open standard. Um, it's community-based. Uh, and it's basically there to standardize how you talk to PCIe-attached non-volatile memory. Today, that's typically a solid state drive composed of NAND flash. But there are you know, researches going into next generation memory technology. There's already some prototypes out there that are based on HDST has done work on NVM Express to phase change. You know, people like Everspin are working on magnetoresistive RAM. Uh, and there's also you know, things like the Memristor from HP uh, and uh, resistive RAM and so forth. And, and this protocol has been built from the ground up to talk to very fast, persistent memory technologies. So it's very low latency. It, today it runs over PCIe, but it, it could also run over other transport mechanisms, and there's work in, going on in, in that space as, as we speak. It's very much optimized for high bandwidth. It supports multi-queues for multi-core systems. It, it, it has quality of service metrics, and, and it, you know, it's designed to run uh, to fast SSDs. So we work with our partners like Samsung. Uh, we're uh, basically a provider of controller technology to them. Uh, so they can go and build best-in-class NVM Express compliant solid-state drives. And an example here is the one that I show you. It has very high throughput, very low latency. Uh, and if you need access to fast data 
and you don't have the ability to store that data in DRAM because DRAM is much more expensive or because of the thermal issues associated with large amounts of DRAM, then you store it uh, perhaps on a drive like this. The other great thing, and this is something I love, and I'm going to tell you a story in a minute about this, but uh, the, the inbox driver is in Linux, right? It's been there for several years. It has a lot of very bright people who beat on it every day, working out how do we change it to make it a little better. And basically, every iteration of Linux since about 2.6 has had slight improvements to that driver. And that continues to happen every iteration of Linux. So it's not PMC working on that driver. It's not just Intel. It's not just Samsung. It's not just Facebook. It's a community process. And through the standard kernel.org uh, rules, uh, that basically the, the, the kernel gets updated. And obviously, Microsoft do something similar for Windows, and VMware do something similar for VMware, and so on. Cappy, I can skip. Thank you, Nick. So what, what have we been doing? Well, we've been looking at a couple of things. We've been looking at, do NVM drives work in an open power environment, right? It's, it's, it's a different endian in this. There's a very different processor. We, you know, a lot of work has been done to make sure NVM works nicely in x86. But to be honest, as far as I was aware, I was the first person ever to get an NVMe drive put into a power box. I don't know if that's true or not, but that was about six or seven months ago. And if anyone beat me to it, just let me know. So one of the questions we had to answer was, is this thing even going to boot up? Is it going to kill the kernel? The answer is initially it did, <laughs> because the kernel wasn't quite sure what to do with it. But we got those problems fixed pretty quick. Um, and, and, and then the next question, once we got the cards up and running, uh, were, uh, do they perform as we would expect? Do they perform as good as, or maybe even better than they would in an x86-based server? If they perform differently, why do they perform differently? And is there things that we might want to do in the driver to address any of those issues? Uh, the second uh, thing that we wanted to do was look at an interface that we don't have on traditional processors. And for us, that was the CAPI interface. So the next thing I wanted to do was go, well, our NVMe and CAPI, do they play well together? What can we do with that? Can we start taking a look at that? Uh, and then the other thing was obviously starting to analyze the CAPI interface as an alternative to NVM Express to talking to non-volatile memory, which is an ongoing area of interest to us. So we got a, a IBM very kindly lent us uh, one of their 822s. Uh, for those of you who care, obviously, we're running Ubuntu. Um, thank you very much um, for, the, for the guys there for, for all their hard work on getting the kernel up. And uh, for those of you who really care, we actually have the kernel ID that all these tests were run on, because that does make a difference, because the driver tends to change. Right? So that tends to change performance. Thank you to the guys at Nalatech for you know, one of the 385 CAPI cards. And we've worked together with them. And I'll talk about that in a second. And the results today are based on a Samsung drive. Uh, the demo that Nalatech are hosting is actually based on our own SSD, which is actually an NVRAM card, which is an interesting discussion in itself. Um, and feel free to come chat to me if you want to talk about that a little later. So the drive itself, um, NVM drives uh, are kind of interesting in the sense that you actually need to have quite a bit of thread work going on in order to read them, um, because um, you can read a lot of data from Flash. And our controllers tend to be focused on the high end of performance. So you can actually build control, uh, SSDs with our controllers that get well over three gigabytes per second of speed off the NAND, right? So this isn't DRAM. This is persistent storage. It's like a hard drive on steroids, right? So we all know that SSDs are fast, but these are very fast, even by SSD standards. So single, single SSD connected directly to the CPU root complex uh, on, a, on, a, on a CPU system. And we're basically getting uh, just over 3 gigabytes per second. And obviously, that depends a little on how you set the system up. But 3 gigabytes per second is kind of the number you want to keep in your head. Um, for those of you who are interested in playing with CAPI, all the RTL that's represented on this graph is part of the GitHub release. It's free. It's under Apache 2. You can take it. You don't have to give it back to us if you make changes. You can take that. You can do what you like with it. I want to make it a community thing, so we'll very happily take pull requests. If you make changes you think make it better, I'd love to work with you on that. If you have an issue with the code, open an issue, and we can work together to try and dig into that. Um, we, we try to use best practices, and thanks to all the CAPI people at IBM and Nalatech who worked with us to kind of put these best practices into effect. Uh, but basically, we you know, implemented a very simple AFU 
that does a couple of different things, and I'll talk a little about some of them in a minute, but to be honest, for the sake of time, uh, I suggest if you're interested, go to the GitHub URL, and you'll be able to dig through all the, the, the readmes and so forth to tell you about it. The one thing that might be interesting to some people is we have this block we call the snooper. It's a protocol analyzer for CAPI, and it also has some performance metrics, so we could do really low-level performance on things like latency. So, you know, if we issue a command, how many clock cycles did it take to complete? So we get very fine-grained granularity. And I was very interested in that because, obviously, latency is really, really important. A lot of people, when they deploy a solid-state drive, they care a lot, not just about what's the average latency, but what's the distribution? What are the 99 percentiles and the 99.9 .9 percentiles? Because applications really care about those outliers, as we call them. So CAPI has the ability to really shine in that regard, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, for those who care, there's a little bit of information about the, uh, the, the actual sizing of this um, particular thing. Oh, and the one thing I should say is, obviously, if you want to drop in your, your, your block that does your own type of data processing, then we've kind of made it quite easy to wire in your stuff. And like I said, you don't have to share that back to the community if you want to keep that for yourself, obviously. But if you did, then we'd appreciate seeing it. So this graph is probably a little hard to, to read through, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but on the FPGA version of the uh, CAPI interface, which is obviously different to the Mellanox one, um, right now in the FPGA version, there are certain limits on performance. Those are not hard limits. They're kind of just where we are right now. I expect they will change over time. And those limits um, are kind of shown as the horizontal lines. Uh, what we've done is we've actually built the AFU, and based on certain parameters, we've basically shown that we can get to those limits. And like I said, this code is not a product. It's there as an experimental vehicle. And it, I do expect it will improve over time, hopefully with help from some of the people in the audience. All right, so the interesting thing, I guess, to see is that the AFU maxes out at around the four gigabytes per second. So this is where I'm saying there's a nice balance between NVM Express, which is doing about three, and this is doing something that's kind of comparable. Okay. Uh, this graph is also probably a little hard to read, but this is actually a, a density function of latency. And the one thing you want to take away from this is the steeper the graph, the better, because it means that I have a very tight distribution on latency. Basically, we went and measured latency over quite long periods of time on CAPI, and one of the really nice things about it is pretty much every command completes in roughly the same time, which means I have a very tight distribution, and again, for solid-state drives and for flash-based storage, that's really, really important. Right, so very nice attribute, uh, and, and it looks like that's you know, something that's going to be very useful in the future. And like I said, you know, there's all the code for you guys to do these measurements yourself is there. Uh, but if you have some questions, grab me later, and we can chat. So we, we built a very simple application. What we did is we generated like you know, 64 gigabytes of random data, which probably took longer than any other part of the entire test. Uh, and, and we basically inserted a search phrase that was a straight, you know, an ASCII phrase that was eight characters long. The default in the code right now is go power eight exclamation mark. Yeah. So, so that's the default, but you can change that. Uh, and then what we did is we put that data on a hard drive, we put it on a SAS SSD, and we put it on an NVM Express SSD. Uh, and then basically the code that we run on the complex on the, on the processor, the C code, goes to that file, uses standard file semantics to grab it. So it's just, you know, opens, reads, and writes, reads the data using multi-threads. So we use p-threads, all standard POSIX stuff. Uh, and then we basically integrated with the, uh, the PSL library to push that data using the CAPI semantics down to the AFU, where there's some RTL that basically just looks through the data as it streams along. And every time it finds the string, it increments a counter. <laughs> and then at the very end, we count how many there is, right? So a very simple application, but you can see that, you know, that ties very closely to string matching, right? Which is something that certain graph algorithms that it, you know, need. Obviously, this could be applied to images and image filtering, a very, very important topic in the data center right now. So our example is somewhat trivial, but it's quite easy to start extending that into something that might be more interesting. And I think the key result is that um, you know, we obviously got very, very, very good performance on the NVMe SSD, and I don't have time to go into it today, but we also measured the, how hard was the processor working while this is all running, and it was basically like under half a hardware thread. So we're doing a lot of processing 
and we're doing it off a persistent block-based storage media, but we're, we're basically freeing the Power 8 to go do stuff that it can make more money on. So I think the idea is partition the problem, do something over here, and make sure that those CPU cycles are doing something that makes a lot of sense for them. So that, that's kind of everything I have. I, I, you know, I think our initial take on this is that NVM Express is working inside open power systems. That in and of itself is great for PMC because we, we really like NVM Express and we obviously sell products in that space. But also what's more interesting as we go to the future is that we can combine it with CAPI and we have a very nice balance between the power of the NVMe to store and pull data and the power of CAPI technology, whether it's through RTL or whether it's through OpenCL or something else to, to manipulate that data. And then with things like the uh, products from Mellanox, there's also pushing that data perhaps to somewhere else to get manipulated in another way in another part of the system. So the URL is there. Um, and uh, and we'd, like I said, we'd be very happy if people picked it, uh, picked it up and ran with it and gave us some feedback. So that's it. Thank you very much.